This is for the players. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. And this is for the players, the pop culture PlayStation podcast, the most 40 years of playing PlayStation in five, almost six years now, combined in the games media, we thought we'd throw a hat into the ring and join that PlayStation conversation. If you would also like to join that PlayStation conversation, you can do so every Monday morning at 9am Australian Eastern Standard Time on YouTube, iTunes and other podcast services. How do you join that conversation? Please head over to www.thepopculturist.com slash questions. Give us your questions, thoughts and suggestions for the show. If a week between shows is too long, please join us on Facebook, join us on Discord and please consider joining us on Patreon. Head over there, check out the tiers. There might be something there that interests you. Don't forget, popculturist.com is now live if you want to see some cool shit. In well. development for like eight months. Yeah. <laughs> Unnecessarily. <for eight> <laughs> it's 95 developed seven and a half months ago. <laughs> we All just pe- the hard work was yeah. done way, way back we in the day. We are just pieces of shit. And Big time. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. It's cracking. I'm fucking fired up. You're not. Oh, I'm, I'm, fl- I'm feeling flat. Yeah, a I bit can t- tell. A bit I can tired. Tell. Yeah. I can tell when I walk in the door. I either get a. a or a. A. Uh, yeah, I didn't. And if it's if Baby it's an sleeps. A, I know we're gonna have a good energy episode. If it's an A, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, yeah. we're gonna struggle for the next hour. Yeah, it was ba- <laughs> baby sleeps. Uh, yeah, and we experienced our first ever tod- toddler night. Oh yeah, where uh, we lay there, he climbs over us and then lays down. Yeah. And you're like, Fuck yes, fuck yes. And he's like, gets up. Woo! And then like, climbs all over. <laughs> you're clearly tired, dude. Like, lie down, go to. Just get, because they realize that, you know, they rest for 30 seconds and mm. their energy reserve goes up just a little <laughs> bit. And they're like, let's expel that. Yeah. And they do it again. Fun times ahead, man. You know, you know what we did though? So I'm like, like I, I <laughs> cable tied him to see, the bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, uh, James does more watch a lot of TV. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we have the TV on, but we don't really like go, hey, sit, watch this. Sit and shut up. Yeah. So like for him, TV is kind of stillish, newish, you know, even like a year old. So I laid him down. I'm like, look, lay on, lay on your side. Here's my phone. We'll watch YouTube. And we watched Boogie 2988. And, was, and <laughs> yeah. out. <laughs> That's fucking boring. Yeah. And he's like, oh, that guy's not. It's nice and soft and subtle. Yeah, yeah he looks real cuddly. It's like, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's not cuddle, cuddly? What? War. No. So to jump into what we've been playing, uh, mine's pretty simple, man. I've been playing Call of Duty World at War 2. World at War World 2. At War 2. I didn't know it's that happened. Technically, kind didn't of what Treyarch it is. Didn't know was still doing that. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of what it is. No, but Call of Duty World War 2. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. Yeah. I mean, I've dabbled in got Doom on the Switch, thanks to Bethesda. Much appreciated for that. Uh, I've been working flat out the last couple of days, so I haven't played it too much, mm. but it's enjoyable so far. Um, bedtime game. See, my, my, this is our view. Once again, we come into the show. like this, this is our PlayStation show, but it's also sort of our gaming show. So sometimes it does cross over the lines. Mm. How does it go with the Joy-Cons? Like my concern is, same as the Vita, like those little thumbsticks just don't have the finesse. No, the Joy-Cons were fine. I was actually having trouble with the triggers okay. instead because they're, they're, very, they're small triggers. They don't have a lot of push behind them. They're more like button they're, pushes they're instead literal, of... There's a, no... Uh, it's, there's a, no, it's a click rather yeah, than a... Yeah, there's no give in yeah. it. You know, with the, like the DualShock 2, 3, 4, whatever, how you can push it down a little bit before yeah. anything actually... Like, it's got a lot of leeway in it, yeah. whereas the Joy-Con is a click. So um, took it, I, I wasn't feeling it at first. I was like, oh, this just isn't working for me. But it's one of those... Um, it was weird playing an FPS not on a DualShock. Mm. I think that was a mental hurdle I have, had to get over. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. It runs fine. Looks good. Looks fucking awesome, actually. Yeah, because like, like, we're not going to play this docked at all. That's the whole point. No, like, no. I'd, I'd never play my Switch docked. Yeah, but I, I did... Got Breath of the Wild. Like, when I bought it, I'm like, cool, let's try this docked thing. Ah, oh, that's cool. I haven't put it in the dock... To charge. Yeah, yeah, sure. But I haven't played it in the dock. No, I mean, like, because, like, if we wanted to play it on the TV, we play it on the PS4. Like, well, yeah, exactly. So the whole... So the whole... Like, my one sort of... When we got... When the code came through, I'm like, here it is, Josh. Like, one rule... Don't dock it. <laughs> Just play it portable. We want yeah. to get this out the best. No, nah, it's fine. It's running well. Looks good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not deep into that. You know, everyone's like, it's a very fast-paced game, and you know, you need to have like high FPS to really feel it. And like, I've never been that mm. guy. So for me, it's it plays fine. It's running fine. I'm enjoying it. It's cool. Because did you spend a lot of time with old school Dooms? Not old school Dooms. No. I'm, I'm, by old school, I mean like the one like two years ago. What, on the PS4. Yeah, that one. I had it on PS4. I got about halfway through and. I just felt too much mm. stuff come out, fell off 
that's where the handheld benefit comes in is because you know when the kids come over and they hold the tv i can still play it yeah you know and the thing is a beast 22 gigs that's like more than the yeah. actual switch storage yeah, i know with all um, the os i didn't re- i must have bought a memory card when i bought the switch because i had like a 64 gig card in there with yeah. nothing on it so that's cool yeah because i messaged you i'm like hey we got the code but we got the code but can you check this thing before i send it <laughs> away and he's like yeah we're cool yeah no, that's fine uh but yeah cod uh it's 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 cod but it's it's awesome it's it's like it's i've all you know how i've always had that cod itch right like every yeah, te- every year i always get it and every year on the lead up it's like no nah! and then it comes out it's like fuck i'm, yeah, like, in, the, picking, I'm in the car to like go i end up picking it, it up like i you know i've I picked up the last three or four so you know uh infinite warfare didn't do it for me picked it up like 20 bucks didn't do it for me black ops 3 sort of did it for me because i like black ops but at the same time it also didn't do it for me it went too far with like that's the thing is because and call, Advanced Warfare didn't matter. call of duty hinges has always hinged on that realism to it mm. and when you start adding in uh jet packs and suits and you know abilities and mm. you know you know like the graviton spikes that dude had in black ops 3 and all that kind of stuff it's when it starts to like go into a different territory yeah not the kind of cod that i enjoy and like because i don't have the fin- like once again the finesse or like the tw- uh, no twitch is there i don't have that twitch capability to be like to wall run glide yeah. off shoot hit the other wall and yeah, like, i got none of them i got none of them skills yeah so for me like have, having playing this going like it's there's no boots two, to the ground no, yeah but as everything boots to the ground like I'm, uh, everyone fucking says it because yeah. it is um and yeah you you're like there's no there's no fancy shit it's running and shooting like it's exactly the reason that, that i was so tempted to pick up the call of duty 4 remaster mm. i still haven't done yet but i'm not gonna need to now because yeah. this is the one i wanted yeah. like world at war is like was my jam like yeah. that is my favorite call of duty yeah uh and this is giving me the exact same oomph yeah um there's some, there's new additions in in the multiplayer there's um obviously standard team deathmatch your kill confirmed oh and it turns out the reason we're having super matchmaking problems last night um mm. the latest patch kind of just fucked everyone oh. over so everyone the one time we actually get to sit down and play a yeah. game together yeah matchmaking's fucked yeah effed um yeah so they've got the standard kill confirmed death uh kill confirmed de- uh, team deathmatch hard point all those sort of ones domination free for all, all that. um there's a new one i don't know whether this has been in any of the previous ones because i didn't really dive too hard in the end but there's like gridiron that's fucking awesome so gridiron is so much fun. Oh, you sell it. Tell us what's it. Well, gridiron is it's, it's gridiron. So it think capture the flag, but instead of a flag, you've got goals on enemy sides. Uh, ball drops in the middle. You run through. You pick up the ball, and you've got a. You can either lob it or run it into the enemy's goals. It's that simple, yeah. Thing is, when you got the ball, you can't shoot. You can't do anything. You can punch motherfucker. You can punch people like basketball to the face. Boom. <laughs> uh, but what you can do, because my kid was Alex was playing it just against bots. If someone comes around the corner, you can throw the ball and they auto catch it, and then you can fucking shoot them, Ooh. and then pick the ball back up and keep going. Yeah, so you can throw it's auto catching. Yeah, yeah. So you can throw it to the enemy players and they auto catch it, and then you can fuck them up. Um, but you can throw it to teammates and stuff like that. We had a play. We'll play multi. Uh, we're playing split screen against bots, and he's running up there to score the goal, and he didn't. He's he gets near the goals. And there's like three guys there. He's like, dad, I'm going to die. So he lobs the ball back at me. I catch it. And I like jump off the building. And go, Whoa, <laughs> it's so much fun. And you still get, you know, regular, um, if you play online, you get all your, your experience and, mm-hmm. you know, you unlock all your shit and all that. It's just, it's just dumb fun because something about playing gridiron doesn't make you take it as seriously as mm. you do like playing the other modes where I tend to get quite a bit frustrated if I'm having a bad match and stuff but gridiron if I keep dying it doesn't matter because I mm. know oh it just it feels different it's see awesome. like as, as someone that's you know not all that really rad at the, the old kills yeah. this gives me different different motivation yeah. like it allows me to be like okay I may not be able to kill 40 50 people mm. in a match yeah. but i can help get that ball close to the end yeah. or i can get touchdowns like yeah. there was one game where i was the only person that scored yeah, yeah. You know, or you can kill the enemy as they're trying to get a touchdown yeah. in that way. there's different ways you can feel like you've you've contributed to the yeah. match because the only way to win the match is like the kills don't count like, no. you, it tells you how many you've killed yeah but it doesn't give doesn't you count it doesn't count the score so it's all about getting the the touchdowns or the yeah. tries that one of the best things i was really disappointed because I was running and like three dudes behind me and I've just jumped and I've just lobbed it. Yeah. 
bing, bing. it's like three points though. Yeah. And I was yeah, like, if you run it in, it's just like touchdown. Yeah, seven right. points. So yeah, I was like, yeah. yeah, what three points? Better than no points. It's better than no points. Multiplayer is fun. It's it's just regular. <clears throat> it's you know regular old Call of Duty, but you know you got your loot boxes and stuff, which I found a bit disappointing. Like the stuff you get in there, I'm like, meh. I don't know, but the, take the, it what we're it. having right, what the loot boxes that I've dealt with right now, they are purely cosmetic. So oh, yeah, contrary but, to what everyone's bitching and whinging about, they are purely cosmetic. Yeah. They're like, hey, here's 48 different skins for your pistol. Uh, here's some calling cards. Here's some emblems. Yeah. As of yet, I've not found anything that actively changes how I play. No, and it's all like gun skins and stuff like that, but none of it is exciting is what I'm getting at. Yeah. I, I'm not excited to open up Blue Box because I, I've got like 20 skins for one pistol that just changes the handle and when you're playing the game you're holding it so you don't see it anyway mm. like there's nothing I'm excited to open from except for emotes I like some of the emotes that I've gotten yeah. from it like so um, Nazi Zombies is cool oh yeah make sure before we jump into Nazi Zombies we should also mention War which is oh, the yeah. newest uh, mode for multiplayer mm. it's very similar to Battlefield's Conquest the whole idea of there's a you know um, like a essentially like a long hallway sort of set up and you you know one's pushing forward and you have got to keep pushing back. It's unlimited yeah. lives, but it's all timed. It's just like yeah, yeah. keep doing it. It's a big game of tug of war. Yeah, like it's one of awesome. them, you know, you got to escort the tanks to the first point yeah. and then you got to get fuel for them. Then you got to get them to the next point. Whereas the enemy team is trying to halt the tanks and blow up the bridge before you can get over there. Mm. Uh, it's cool. It's fun. I love it. I, I like I like the fact that yeah, that it is literally like there's unlimited lives and you just go. Yeah, you just go. It, like it just it just adds that nice. Uh, frenetic to it yeah you know it's all time so it's like there's that that pressure but it's not the pressure of can you get the most kills it's mm. just can we all collectively yeah. get objective because call of duty is primarily a very solo focused multiplayer um you can be in a squad with your buddies but you're all gonna fuck off and do it, whatever mm. where battlefield is literally we're a squad you work best if the four of you play together you play your roles and you play it smart yeah um and this kind of puts it in the halfway yeah. point well they're, yeah they're designed in a way that you can go still go off and be by yourself but still contribute to the yeah to doing whatever the objective is yeah and like but at the same point if with the war mode if you and a buddy are standing behind a tank pushing that tank forward mm. you've got either side so if you it's just you or you know yeah, yeah. there's benefits of being a team mm. in that mode so I, I fucking hate multiplayer but I love it at the same time yeah I'm, enjo why, I, I'm enjoying this so much and um, yeah Nazi Zombies is this great this is going on really long let's Nah, fuck it. I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's the only game I played this it's week. It's so hot in here. Shut up. Yeah, yeah Nazi <laughs> Zombies is cool. I played it with my kid when, when yep. I got it. Um, brutal. It's fucking brutal. Yeah. It's fucking brutal. It's horrifying. Like, some of those zombies are horrifying. Yeah, look at. yeah. Uh, it looks great. You know, the zombies the zombies in previous games were never, like, visually kind of scary. It was more the atmosphere that was mm. making it intense. You know, they're breaking in. They're going to overwhelm me and stuff. But these ones look fucked up. And it's like, don't fucking come near me. Mm. You got, like, four classes you can pick from with different abilities. Yeah, Dev Tenet. I picked every time. <laughs> so this is where you can get... um. This is where it goes a little bit outside of Call of Duty boots to the ground where you get abilities and stuff. Like one of them can go invisible uh, so zombies don't target you for a while. The other one can like taunt all the zombies but, like they, aggro, do, yeah. but they do double damage for that duration. Um, One's like infinite yeah. ammo for a small period of time. Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh, it's cool. I, I, did, I think I got to like round seven yeah. um, but it's rad. It's uh, we played on, like, we did the stream on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, you know, sadly couldn't make it. Yeah. Um, and it sadly got cut short by me too. Uh, we, a, <laughs> we just weren't meant to stream. We had a Wednesday. great night. We had on a Wednesday. shitty day. Fuck. On um, yeah. So we had. I had Pinch, one of our one of our regular contributors, one of our patron supporters. Uh, you know, pretty much carried me to like eight, oh, to eighteen rounds. Oh, you he yeah. playing with you? And I got it? obliterated. That's awesome. That's not awesome. <laughs> um, Thanks, Pinch. And quickly, I'll touch, touch, touch on the campaign as well. I've been. Yeah. I played a little bit last night and a little bit this morning. Um, it opens with uh, D Day. You know, Normandy Beach, the stock standard World War Two thing. It's very interesting, actually. Um, as, I was, as I was saying I said before we started, like, the fidelity of the game, because the campaign looks fucking schmick, right? Mm. Schmick. Mm. It, may, it adds this extra oomph to it. Like, because like, in my head, I remember playing it when I was like, what? Fucking, what would have been... 13 18 19 mm. like oh, the water walks that's what oh, I, okay, I played on yeah. ps3 and then that's excluding any of the ps2 ones that's excluding the original medal of honor on ps1 like in my head it always looked like rat shit mm. but with here having all just the the better quality sound the better quality visuals just like the the the, the uh, particle effects like that beach blows the fuck up 
<laughs> so do you enjoy like bayonetting some dude and like shredding his it's n- it reminds me of like uh tropic thunder it's like yeah. oh what is this and he's just like mashing the bayonet <laughs> around in there uh so is it like when gt when you could play gta 5 in like first person it added that extra level oh, dude, of like-, like i feel actively uneasy yeah in like not in like a kind of uh you like it's being older as well has changed my sort of sensibilities in life so i'm looking at this going this really fucking happened and then i i was in the boat and like the because it doesn't just you don't just start on the boat like you start in in the bowels of the big ass fucking freighter um chatting to your buddies and then you all walk out and and they're all dead you all yep you 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 chat to this like this pill me like hundreds of people in this little in this little like sleeping quarters right yeah and you will walk out you'll climb down into the boats and all your boats and like the whole time you can look around and you can see the hundreds of boats you can see what's going on all the preparation yeah you can see all the hundreds of boats and like you get this big pep speech at the start from one of the captains or the colonels or whatever Mm -hmm. and it's just and like we when shit goes down like it's kind of quiet and then as you sort of get into range of all the the machine guns they just start unloading on you obviously which yeah. is, you know pretty much what happened yeah. um and then you have to drop like so you know in the previous ones you would just hide down you could look around like you have to drop yeah. like so you're like bunkered down in this boat <laughs> it's like ting, 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 ting. like everyone's dying around you literally yeah. no one survives so Actually, it's like you're playing through the opening scene of saving private yeah Ryan. so there's you and one other person that survives that opening boat yeah and it's brutal like once that thing drops brr, yeah. and then you have to bail off the side and like because rather than just gun rushing it to the front like you have to you know time it with the time it with the um with the reloads and yeah. just sort of be somewhat smart about it that's interesting yeah i haven't touched the campaign yet um but yeah no i've been meaning to you know start it and give it a go at least yeah and it's like really gnarly and then on, on top of today being you know remember and say the day we're playing it i was like wow this is fucking real yeah you know, because like I had that, I had that, that harrowing moment of as I'm doing it, I'm like, man, what, what would I do if I was in this boat? I'm like, I would have wouldn't have made it. I wouldn't have made it because I would have sh- like, they, I wouldn't let me on because I would have shit myself <laughs> before I even got there. <laughs> oh, it, there was so much shit in that water. Yeah, <laughs> like it's just, <laughs> yeah, it was it was really confronting looking at it in a different way and yeah. just be like taking, you know, being older and yeah, having a bit more life experience, uh, life experience and understanding plus of more- having a kid and mortality. Like yeah, like how many of those kids on the boats had kids? Yeah, or were kids. Yeah. Oh, and there's a really interesting moment, actually. Uh, well, we'll jump into that. Uh, this game's actually blown me out of the way, like, in a really good way. Like, I, mm. way better than I thought it was going to be. I guess having low expectations coming into Call of Duty really helped make yeah, this yeah, much better. Yeah, totally. um, but heading into, like, the second second mission in the campaign, you drive past this blown-up Nazi, like, town, like, you know, like, trucks and cars and stuff there. And one of the guys makes comments, like, yeah, and they're like, dude, they're civilians, man. Mm. And, like, there's a, there's a weird conversation. It's like, yeah, well, not all of them are like, Nazis, man. Like, yeah. And, like, they, 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 like, actually had an active conversation. The guy's like, yeah, but they're fucking, you know, they're, they're whatever, whatever. But they're fucking German. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever they're saying is, they're like, dude, like, these guys aren't Nazis. These yeah. guys are just civilians. And, like, yeah, don't forget, Germany's done some cool shit like Mo- like Mozart, electron microscope, and like, <laughs> and they list all these things, and you're like, yeah, it's a good fucking point. Yeah. Like, it's not like so it, it's, it, it's a little on the nose, but I kind of like it. Paints it. it in a little bit of a different way than Wolfenstein does. Yeah, right. Whereas Which Wolfenstein just, just going fuck everybody up. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's it's very nice. cool. Uh, that's enough talking about Call of Duty. Yeah, I have to timestamp that. This is the new call, this is the new Call of Duty podcast. Uh, yeah. we're <laughs> heading into the news, and we inform the players not about Call of Duty. But about what, what uh, happened this week in PlayStation and gaming's got eight bits of news today. Number one, Respawn Entertainment, the studio behind the Titanfall franchise, is being bought by EA. Both companies are already working together on several projects, including a VR game, a Star Wars game, and a, quote, new title in the Titanfall franchise. EA announced the acquisition, saying the move builds on a successful publishing partnership already in place between the two companies. Respawn CEO Vince Zampella said the move, quote, brings the resources and support his company needs for its long-term success. We're excited to combine our strengths, he said of the acquisition. In a statement on Respawn sites, and Palace said there will be no layoffs or major organisation changes at Respawn and games currently in development are continuing as planned. So it seems like EA have done a trading deal. Mm. They've traded in Visceral and taken in Respawn. Yeah, the optics on this aren't too good. I mean, 
you know, it, it makes sense in a way because Respawn have been working for EA for fucking years, like mm. primarily, you know, un, you know, with EA. And, you know, it makes sense. You know, we've worked together for this long. We've been pretty successful, you know, come aboard and, you know. But surely from Respawn's point of view, they've looked at the track record of EA, you know, Mythic and, you know, Visceral and I think Black Frog and Maxis fucking and Maxis yeah. and heaps more and they've gone, fuck, like, mm. I don't know, surely, I'm, it's good. It's a good thing. It's great for Respawn. It's great for but Respawn. But it's also horrifying for Respawn. But, you know, they need to deliver because Titanfall 2 was a fucking awesome game. Mm. The multiplayer was so fresh and it had so many new ideas and the cat single player campaign was actually amazing. Mm. It just, it came out in between Battlefield 1 and COD, like right in the middle. And that's, that was, I think that's what did it in, yeah? Because... Titanfall 2, I reckon, deserves more notoriety than it actually has because it was a really, really good game. It just came out at a bad time. But being the cynical me, will Titanfall 3 have all these microtransactions? And, uh, yes. You know, <laughs> yeah. Will EA do to Titanfall 3 what they did to Dead Space 3, which eventually led to Visceral's downfall? Uh, look, is it, I, I, think there, I don't think EA will learn from this giant backlash f- that people are giving out for Visceral. No. Uh, I think it comes down to, look, it's business. This is part of business, and that's mm. how they'll treat it. They're going to treat it emo- emotionally, and that's fine. Yep. Um, I don't believe it's as simple as we got rid of Visceral so we could buy Respawn. No, no that's just me being. I, a yeah, no, because I, I think Jason Schreier put up a good thread, dude. He busts some real good shit. He's a yeah. he's like he, a genuine, he's a legit genuine journalist. journalist. Yeah. Um, and you know about the acquisition, and how it's sort of been in the works actually for a while, and it's just horrible the timing has happened badly yeah because like for us you know from the, the average person it looks super shit yeah um i like i'm not going to be as cynical to be like well give it five years and they'll be gone but could it, be. it hinges very much on titanfall 3 like, i'd see i don't even yeah. my concern is titanfall 3 won't even happen like well it's already in development though is it really so, yeah it says, oh um, shit okay uh yeah both companies were already working together on several projects including vr star wars and a new titanfall game okay the star, well yeah so the star wars we already knew about the vr i'm pretty sure maybe mentioned at some point like if star wars does well fantastic that's it's easy money at star wars yeah. as long as it's not star wars destiny or whatever the hell they're trying to do now uh i think that'll do fine mm. see the thing is is that uh the rights to titanfall is owned by respawn which is now, now owned, by owned by EA. EA. so so does that mean uh, you okay. might be able to tell me this does that mean let's say uh, respawn end up either being shut down or let go or you know severing ties does that titanfall move with them or does it, EA it, de- keep it depends it on the contract okay right. um so an example is with io and square enix right so uh or a quick bit of news on that uh the new hitman game is in development well, from io well done i'm glad so they, glad it, they it, it would all be it all depend on the contract so when they sign when they decide to be acquired when they agree to be acquired by ea in their contract they would probably state all whatever goes to ea so depending on that that agreement if they then leave which mm. is unlikely if they then get canned mm. surprise it's all theirs you yeah. know what i mean like yeah, that's yeah, a, yeah. it's the like, when you buy you buy all their ip you buy all their things yeah see that's the thing and if they shut the studio down there's no studio for the ip to go to well anymore. yeah well it depends like you know like luckily with like io as, as, yeah. as using it as still that same example like they were lucky enough that square enix were like yeah you take hitman with you it's fine yeah but they didn't shut io down they just let them go yeah yeah Whereas if Respawn actually gets... The studio gets shut down, Respawn no longer exists to own mm. the Titanfall IP. So it will probably default to EA, I'd imagine. Yeah. <laughs> all and the then best they'll, for they'll Re- just make a thousand Yeah, all, all the best for around. Respawn. I'm keen as, I'm keen for Titanfall 3. I don't really give a dick about the Star Wars game, to be I'm honest. I'm keen about the Star Wars game. Yeah. I give a dick about Titanfall. You know what I do give a dick about? What? The Witcher. Ooh. This is a little bit sad, but, you know... Uh, CD Projekt Red still isn't planning to make a Witcher 4, but that doesn't mean it won't make games set in the same universe. Speaking to Strefa in Westerol, and translated by IGN Poland, CD Projekt CEO Adam Kaczynski explained that while the company sees Geralt's Witcher trilogy as definitively finished, the company still owns the IP, of course. Kaczynski says the company will probably return to the world of the Witcher because both fans and investors will be disappointed if they don't. Now, what other companies in a similar situation? Naughty Dog with Uncharted, similar mm. thing. They've said, uh, you know, Nathan Drake's story is, is done. And now they're dabbling with the other, like the Lost Legacy, you know. So maybe that CD Project Red's plan, you know, mm-hmm. the finished the Geralt story of that universe. Because the, the, the game is called The Witcher. It's not 
you know, Geralt and his friends, mm. you know? So whether they start making side games, you know, on side characters, you know, little adventure like with Siri, because Siri's a major character, similar to what Aunt, uh, Naughty Dog are doing with no, the, the I want a story about the dwarf blacksmith that I spoke to in the first town. He was like, Scottish one was really fucking pissy at me. Oh, because some dude burnt down his shit. Yeah, he was so pissy. Yeah, I helped him out. We're, we're buds. Me too. We're, yeah, we're, we're, yeah. Good, we're good. That was the first... My stepdad, um, who is like Glaswegian, mm. uh, he didn't... He ignored fucking everyone. And then he saw that dwarf and was like, what the fuck? And then went straight <laughs> to me. He's like, yeah, he's like, so I'm burnt... Like, like, I can't do Scottish accent. He's like, they burned down my stuff. He's like, how dare they? <laughs> not the dwarves. <laughs> yeah, not the dwarf. And then yeah, Dave, you did everything you could to help that. Yeah, because that story's like, everyone hates the dwarf because he's making arms for... No, uh, David liked because he was Scottish. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but this, if you... It's the, the key thing with The Witcher is if you dig a bit deeper, uh, the story's really interesting. So the dwarf, everyone hate in the town hates him because mm. he's making weapons for the Nilfgaard who mm. are invading, yeah? And everyone's like, fucking supporting the enemy, you fucking traitor, and you talk to him, he's like, yeah, well, they've got, like, my family and stuff. Yeah. I, I don't have a choice. It's such a cool thing with The Witcher series. You dig a little bit deeper, below service level, and it's like... Woo. So yeah, I mean, I'm all for seeing more Geralt. Like, I fucking love Geralt. But yeah, he's such an iconic character. The big difference compare, like, comparing to Uncharted as an example, Uncharted is... Uh, well, the Uncharted franchise is to the high ends of Sony. If mm. Sony... Of Sony Worldwide Studios. So if they, if they say, hey, we're making another Uncharted, Naughty Dog's like, I don't want to do it. So like, cool, we're making somebody else do it. Yeah. They have that power. Mm. Uh, City Project Red don't have any boss. Like, there's no one saying... You should make another wish. They're like, no. Yeah, like, no, we don't want to right now. So they're like, hey, we, we don't want to right now. We're going to make Cyberpunk and then we're going to do something else. And it's like, okay. Yeah. Because like, we have to, because like, they have that power. Like, yeah, they are independent awesome. enough to be able to get away with that. Yeah, so, you know, which, as excited as I would be for more Witcher games. Um, which also means that when it does come back, it will be uh, awesome. It will be thought yeah, exactly. out. Exactly. It'll be. It'll you know, we haven't seen Geralt for like 10 years. We're at the PlayStation 6 now. And it's like, Geralt's back. And As if we haven't talked about COD enough already. We'll, gonna we'll do it run again. Over this one. I'll do it quick. Uh, COD World of... <sighs> run over it quick as I fumble my fucking lines. Call of Duty World War II has sold twice as many units in the first three days of release than last year's entry, Infinite Warfare, did in the same period. Activision revealed Sledgehammer Games' new first-person shooter earned over $500 million in three days. Fuck Makes sense. Jesus Christ. Makes sense. People wanted not space, not yeah. duty. Yeah. And then they voted with their wallet and they supported that. So, yeah. fantastic. Really good. Glad people do what they, you know, people are like, we don't, we want not a space game. Yeah. And so, oh, you didn't do it. Here you go. Uh, the franchise's return to World War II also saw the highest total connected users on current gen consoles and PC in franchise history, and is now the best selling digital full game on PS4 on its launch day. Listen to the people, get lots of money. That's, that's, it. that's the key thing here. Number four. Four. Tell one. <coughs> Telltale Games, the developers behind, so you know about Telltale, is, has announced 25% of its staff has been laid off in a company wide restructure. The reduction affects 90 staffers across... Oh, hello, foot. Hey, Fitz. Hey, man. All of Telltale's divisions, but are, according to a press release, not going to affect Telltale's already announced slate of games, which includes new seasons of The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. Quote from Telltale, The decision is designed to make company a leader in player-driven narrative games more competitive as a developer and publisher of groundbreaking story-driven gaming experience with an emphasis on high quality in the years ahead. A statement from Telltale reads probably see this coming I mean Telltale games I've played The Walking Dead uh, Tales from the Borderlands and the Minecraft story mode mm -hmm. all three of those fucking amazing you know The Walking Dead kind of The Walking Dead introduced us to this style of game and really showed us you know what Telltale can do put in, you know all that kind of stuff Tales from the Borderlands is the best game they've put out cried I laughed had a great time with that game and Minecraft story mode obviously for the younger generation I play through that with my son and we have a great time now the other ones like Batman I've heard meh uh, Guardians of the Galaxy I've heard meh mm. uh, what else is there There's uh, Game Game of Thrones was pretty much meh. the worst thing they've ever done <laughs> um, and yeah it, you probably see it coming mm. I know you have an opinion on this well my, my opinion comes from a different place uh, you know because the, the whole decision is like hey we need to restructure to be able to re oomph our tech pretty much it's like yeah yeah, you, yeah do. you do <laughs> and they're like oh you know due to a, like, I think they're, I'm thinking about make, putting words in their mouth but like yeah due to fluctuation of sales or whatever it's like yeah 
because your games are broken yeah. so people don't buy them yeah. and like it sucks people have to lose their job for this like you it doesn't what i, what I don't understand is in order to do more they need less like it, it that doesn't make sense well i think they're just about to wrap up the guardian series unless um, these are all like writers and stuff that they don't yeah, need well, right now yeah who knows because yeah i think they're they're either about to or they did wrap up guardians Batman's not far off finishing season, up. Season two. Well, season uh, one's done. Season yeah. two's underway. Season two of Minecraft is almost done. So they've nearly finished. And I think The Walking Dead is pretty much done as well, except they've got one more season to go, I think. Yeah. Um, so they, they get it coming to the tail end of a lot of their games where they are wrapping them up and finishing them, which I think will give them a bit of a breather period to pull everyone back and go, okay, let's let's fix our shit. Fuck. <clears throat> but then you look you look at all the all the ones they've done. Now, granted, it's only like five or six, but that you know that's five or six. We're each with five episodes apiece over X amount you know a lot of these were going on at once so there was um, you know Walking Dead with seasons 1, 2 and 3 The Wolf Among Us Tales from the Borderlands Game of Thrones Batman season 1 and 2 Minecraft, Minecraft Story Mode season 1 and 2 I'm sure I've missed another one in there as well I think there's one more that we got into the Galaxy seen. which I didn't yeah. mention and there's another one as well but like they just went way too hard spread themselves way too thin mm -hmm. and then they showed like the first one or two episodes in each season tend to be schmick mm. because you know they've had they've had the development time and they're all good they've never like they've very rarely if never kept to a schedule mm -hmm. you know like as in last week when we did the drop and it's like guns get episode five i'm like what yeah like didn't that you know that's the whole you know buy the season pass and you'll get it when you get it yeah at some point and like that's balls like yeah. episodic content works when it's structured like yeah. here 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 and here yeah. like granted I don't understand things change but like even when they're struggling to meet that deadline and they don't meet that deadline they then release they release episode 5 and it's fucking broken mm. so it's like regardless of you not meeting a deadline it's still broken yeah See, I know we're being hard on Telltale but it's out of love like, I do love Telltale games and you know what I want back from Telltale is that that first season of The Walking Dead which fucking shredded everyone who played it you know not a dry eye in the room when it came to the closing mm. of that you know I want that to, and it wasn't <clears throat> broken either it played well it did exactly what it wanted to do uh, except there was some save issues at some point but that, but was the, that was the technology at the time that, yeah, and at the time it was you know groundbreaking but they haven't evolved with yeah. the times instead you know just spreading themselves thinner and thinner so you know, it sucks for those 90 people that got laid it off. super But sucks. I think for us as gamers, we will end up uh, on the better side of things eventually. Keep moving on. Um, uh, whatever. Sony has provided an update on what fans can expect from this year's PSX, announcing the date and time of the PSX <coughs> 2017 presentation and confirming new information will be revealed about Ghost of Tsushima and Dreams? What the Fuck! According to a post, we, call, like, we, we called, called it, it, but uh, I'm still surprised. I called it, I'm still surprised. Yeah, it's like <laughs> <laughs> According to a quote on the PlayStation blog, early bird ticket holders will have access to Sony's PSX presentation, which will be held at the Anaheim Convention Center on Friday, December eighth, eight p.m. PT, or for us here in Australia, two p.m. Saturday, the eighth of December. Guess who's getting the live for the players? Woo! You guys. We'll have to work out the logistics of it, but we'll do it. It'll uh, be fun. It's pretty straightforward. Yeah. I'd you can do all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, we did like this is kind of what I wanted because when they showed at Paris Games Week the trailer for Ghost of Tsushima, it's like I'm super interested. But that trailer showed me fucking nothing. Yeah. I need to know more. Uh, and Dreams, of, uh, we were like, yeah, um, wasn't at there. If it's not at PSX this year, it's got to be dead. And mm. you know, here it is. That's good. No mention of Days Gone. <laughs> What's your opinion on that? Balls! <laughs> or it'll be their big surprise. Yeah. Because, well, you'd think they would have held Dreams for that big. You know, not it. But I guess with all the notoriety around Dreams, you know, announcing that, you know, get perks people's interests. Because like, mm. everyone's expecting to hear more Days Gone. No one's expecting to hear more about Dreams at this point. So I guess, yeah, might be, might be a smart move. Uh, but anyway, we'll be live streaming our reactions to the conference, and we'll we'll do we'll steal from another web, from another channel, and we'll do a live uh, we'll do we'll we'll live stream the uh, the actual conference conference itself. We'll stop the stream and we'll come back and we'll do for the play, the, the uh, post show as the episode. Yeah, let's do that. That'll be rad. Uh, so December 8th so and you can guys watch that live too of course yeah so obviously uh, December 8th 1, 2, 3 it's a month away exactly one month away I can make some things happen in that time sweet 
Uh, third to last, I'll skim through it. You can, in the US store, you can now use trophies to buy shit on from the PlayStation store. Hey! 100 silver trophies equals 100 points, 25 gold trophies is 250, and 10 platinums is 1,000. As you might expect, the payoff here isn't gigantic. 1,000 points breaks down to 10 bucks of credit. And it's not retroactive with trophies you've already earned Suck in the past. It. Um, it's a cool incentive for trophy yeah, hunters. Like it's a, you know, I, I, the, I was reading online and a lot of the comments were well, time to play Telltale games because they're easy platinums, you yeah. know, uh, easy and cheap platinums. Um, it's a cool incentive, you know. It's something that it'll be something like you know you play your PlayStation for a year and all of a sudden boom you got an extra ten bucks. It's like oh fuck yeah, you know you don't keep track of it, but eventually you'll get something. But it's a lot of trophies you need to get anything worth. <laughs> you need to, to get a general AAA game on the PlayStation Store. You need a hundred platinum trophies. Uh, but that's all. That, but think you know that's also. A, oh, oh, I just realised they mentioned no bronze. Yeah, no bronze. Oh, that's good. Because bronze are like the the runner up. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Like, play, bronze are participation. You can do what I do and just play a bunch <laughs> of half games and then <laughs> get like eight bucks. Yeah. Right, it's a cool incentive. I hope they uh, expand more on it at some point. But it is in the US only for now. Uh, second last, Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick has said that his company, which publishes the likes of GTA V and NBA 2K, will aim to offer quote recurring consumer spending opportunities. In other words, microtransactions in all of its games going forward. Expected. Yeah, it's just a quick one. I mean, you know, Take Two have been a little bit shitty in the public eye lately, uh, especially when they came down on that website that does mods for GTA Five. Mm-hmm. That even um, Rockstar, like Rockstar, would look at mods and go put them on their website block and be like, "Guys, get this mod for our game. It's fucking rad." Mm. The developers are like, "Mods are sick," and Take Two's like, "Shut it down." And, you know, it's had mods since launch that the publisher itself, uh, the developer itself has promoted. Um, it's just, you know, take two of the first to come out and actively say it. It was from an investor call I had. Um, but I'm pretty sure, you know, EA and Activision are probably moving in the same direction. Yeah, look, when uh, GTA Online makes stupid so much money. $450 million. Yep in the last 12 then, months. Then as a business decision, you're going to be like, let's not mm. do that anymore. As much as we all hate it, some, a lot of people, are, you know, we must be the vocal minority mm. uh, that actively speak out against it because, you know, when EA and Take Two and Activision are like, we made half a billion dollars last year for microtransactions, why would they take them out? Yep. The only way to stop it happening is en masse, stop buying them, but it will never happen. Yes. Ever. So what needs to happen is pivot what the... As in, so market transactions aren't going away. We just need to ensure that the people that are doing them don't use malicious yeah, market exactly. transactions. Like that's, that pattern Activision had Yeah, a that is while the ago. only... Way, like, they're not going away, but let's make them better yeah, for everybody. They, look, they are a staple in the games industry now, and they will be for an undetermined amount of time. So... Whether there needs to be some kind of like active like board regulating what can and can't be in there mm-hmm. and what's what's um what's okay what's not how does it affect the rating if you have transactions in there and all that kind of stuff, um you know we're we're in that middle point now where it's like okay it's here now what how do we make yeah. it make sure that while it's here it's it's not being a c- oh, I nearly said the c word I don't think I've ever said that on this <laughs> show I, I, I like it. <laughs> ah, <I caught> myself. <laughs> top selling games for the week ending date i didn't put down for the week ending the 5th of november 2017 starting at number 10 crash insane trilogy number nine shadow of war number eight south park the fractured butt hole number seven gta 5 number six nba 2k 18 number five wolfenstein 2 Number four, FIFA 18. Number three, GT Sport. Number two, what I wrote here is Ars Origins. Number one, Call of Duty World War Two. No surprises. So, like, I like it because, you know, two months ago I was whinging that, that it's always the same fucking list. Mm. And now every week there's new, new ones jumping in, new ones jumping out. Um, uh, but come a uh, month from now, it's going to be on the list. Yeah. I don't... I, yeah. Outside of, like... Uh, Shadow of War maybe going off the, going off South Park maybe coming off well Crash Insane's heading off it's been up there since it came out yeah um, not, not at number one for a lot of weeks um, but it's at number 10 now so <clears> it's not far off getting dropped yeah out. I think Crash will drop so in the way it looks for the next month or so Crash will drop out Battlefront 2 will come in um, Skyrim VR Skyrim VR will make, Sky, Skyrim, yeah Skyrim VR will make a presence 
um, and then it'll bail out again. But like, the, well, these are the games we'll see on rotate for the next like two months, three months. Yeah, exactly. Until we head head into uh, In, know, until we head into, into what we assume is the early 2018 first party releases. And Monster Hunter World just comes out. Mm, God of War top. end of March. You heard it here first. No, you're theory. wrong. It'll be May. May. I'm gonna say it's May. It's that's gonna it for be the, May. <laughs> that's it for the news this week. Pretty packed week, really. There's yeah, a lot of, a lot of kind of. A lot, like, we we're like so deep into the show already, and uh, all we've done is talk Call of Duty and news. Last week, when I put the timestamps in, the news finished at like 42 minutes in. <laughs> the show went for an hour, so the main topic was at like 43 minutes. <laughs> But hey, it's yeah, our show. Have, yeah, I had to send an email through to Bethesda, uh, through to Ubisoft, saying, "Hey, thank you for we saying, talk about it." Forty five minutes. So, so, in. Yeah, we, we so we talked about Assassin's Creed Origin at forty six minutes into the show. Thank it's, you. It's the structure of the show. That's how yeah, it works. And that's why I'm adding in timestamps from here on. I need to fast, but I'm not going to. <laughs> just thought I'd let it out there because my insides just went. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, oh. It's like my throat oh. when I started to say the c word. Yeah, huh? yeah. Like, I went because I, I, I was like. Wait, I'm on air. I can't fart. I shouldn't fart. It's a hot room. It's not oh, yeah, safe please, in here. Please don't. No windows so we are head opening. into the section uh, where we talk about the main point of interest for the week. It just doesn't have a name. The it's main never topic. going to. Main topic. So this is purely speculative topic coming from Ubisoft. Uh, I'll read a quick little statement they've made and then go into it from there. The next generation of PlayStation Xbox hardware is at least a couple of years away Is if the... Si- I'll start that again. The next generation of PlayStation and Xbox hardware is at least a couple of years away if the thinking of Ubisoft CEO Yves Guillermo proves to be true. Quote, as Sony launches PlayStation 4 Pro last year and Microsoft Xbox One X this year, we think we still have a minimum of two years in front of us before something new is coming, he told investors via GameSpot. That's all I want to talk about on that. So, let's just run with the theory here that... 20, 2020, you know, mid 2020, early 2020, we okay. Set the stage for you. E3 2019, um, PlayStation comes out, got the orchestra again, bigger than ever before. Really haunting, dark music, music we, a tune we we're not familiar with, never heard before. And then trailer pops up, and it's Death Stranding. And it's like, burr, burr, does all the Death Stranding stuff. People are like, whoa, it's Death Stranding. And then it fades out and goes, for the players, PlayStation 5. How do you react? Um, I would be like, one, they stole our branding. <laughs> <laughs> they stole our branding. <laughs> we, are here, like, I, we are here by the good grace of Sony, <laughs> not like infringing on their copyright. I'm like, I do appreciate that they put our name on the end of that yeah. screening trailer. Ha- but- and they put hashtag <laughs> for the players in, no, like, in the post. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'd be very interesting. I, I, I think it would... I don't think... I think they'd more likely say coming to the next PlayStation yeah. console and it's like that'd be no well here are the questions here's there's probably three questions I want to ask I did reach out to the community for their opinions on these which I'll get to as well thank you to those who commented Champion. two years mid 2020 mm-hmm. for the next gen of next proper gen of consoles is it too soon or too late well there's three questions I want to go one question at a time so we don't kind of get all okay, fired so up okay so what's the first one first question is is that Perfect, too soon, too late. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, you got to remember, PS4 launched 2013, mm-hmm. 2014. Yep. That makes it seven years. That's a console generation. Uh, we were very spoiled with PS3. That went 10 years mm-hmm. simply because of the financial crisis. Yeah. Period. That's like mm-hmm. the only reason it went that way. Yeah. It's because they, like, they had, they couldn't, companies could not afford to take the hardware hit, like the risk and the cost of it. So we were very spoiled. So we have already have gone longer. However, uh, long, longer than the standard uh, generation. However, with the PS4 Pro and what's now the Xbox One X, you think that would extend it? So that may push it a little bit closer to the, mm-hmm. like the 10 year mark. Um, so having something come out in two years is a bit of a dick move. Well, that that was the next question. How does that make the Pro and Xbox One X users feel? Uh, you you own a Pro. I, I don't. I, that, I, would, that would make it the Pro be on the market for four years, and that yep. would be fine. See, I'm I'm so at the moment not one for these mid gen consoles because I prefer personally anyway I prefer that huge leap instead of the little incremental mm. ones that's why I fell so far behind with PC gaming is mm. because I made that huge leap you know six or seven years ago and spent 1500 bucks on a computer and then didn't upgrade it from there mm-hmm. 
which fucked me over in the end because then nothing could be upgraded because it's nearly a decade old, yeah? But I, I do prefer these massive jumps. And I know Dave, a part of the, and our PR guy, part of the community, is the same. He prefers that massive leap in one mm. go instead of these little incremental ones. So do you think going forward, these little incremental upgrades we may have, whether it's one in a generation or two, uh, do you think that'll become the norm, or they, um, or did we hit a techno- technological benchmark this generation that they had to do something about? Because 4K and 60 FPS yeah. is a big thing now, yeah. Yeah, and it I, happened I, in the middle of a console I, generation. Yeah, I think the big, the, the suddenly, the sudden big oomph for like Ultra HD did happen right in the generation, right in the middle of the generation. I think with with the way the technology is growing and the speed of that, and like the the demand for 4k um really push their hand to make a decision yeah um so yeah i don't see i don't see irrit- ir- blah, irritative consoles being the, i don't well i personally don't want them to be the, the the future depending on sales that's what's interesting um but an example you know the xbox one x is such a technological leap compared to the xbox one that it should it could uh, have been I, a new generation it could have been and it probably should have been yeah. like i think xbox should have had the initiative and like the the courage as you know like apple the courage to remove the fucking headphone yeah. jack the courage to be like this is next yeah. gen see that's the issue i was talking when i made this post on facebook on our community group facebook.com slash groups slash the pop culturist join the conversation when i was talking to dave about it in the comments you know we pretty much agreed that xbox have kind of shot themselves in the foot because they have the one x which has enough power to literally be next gen but it's forever held back because of the um the original xbox one you know you can make a game for the one x and you know downscale it or there's patches or make it for the one and upscale it that's all well and fine but it will never ever be the same as being built ground up solely for a next gen console yeah so like cons- like consoles are different to pc mm. right so you know a pc they're like hey here's the game and you can play it x amount of thousand different specs and it works mm. um console it is a bit more it's it, it could be simpler to scale that way because there's three versions there's the ultra version which is your one x then there's your you know high which is your your xbox one s as an example and then you've got your barely running recommend minimum on your xbox one um ps4 is kind of the same ps4 ps4 pro and slim the slim is essentially is is ps4 like the slim was improved in no no the internal is like identical Okay. It's identical. Like okay. apart from like things that are slightly jacked up, like uh, Wi-Fi, oh, okay. and but like that's it. Like the, the internet's yeah. the same. Yeah. Um, so I think Sony will make the first push into next gen mm. because they have the luxury to do that because yeah. they their they, their next jump would be that. Mm. Um, because the One X was the chance for because. Microsoft lost this generation. Yeah. yeah. Fucking got annihilated. But people forget so soon that Microsoft fucking annihilated the last generation. They destroyed Sony last year. Sony did well. Uh, at the start? At the start. Towards the end, it got a bit more fuddled. But for that, as a whole, that yeah. generation, Microsoft won. And this was their, this would have been their yeah, chance from to a, get from that. A, from a like, optics perspective, yeah, yes. Yeah. But from like a numbers, PS3 won out in the end. In the end, yeah. But only because like there were Xbox 360s that were actually like just dying. Yeah. Just left in the front yeah. side. But what my point was is that this could have been Xbox's chance to get that leg up on the next gen, mm. to start strong, start hard, start the next gen, and to kind of maybe turn the tables in their favour a little bit. Whether they're too far behind now to kind of do that is a different question. But, you know, it was their chance and they chose not to take it, which is fine. Um but yeah, I, I agree. I, if if they said twenty twenty, we will get a PS five in 2020, 2020, I'd be like, sweet. Yeah, day one buy. See, for you, that's because that, that would that would be you've that had would, seven years. Yeah, I've got my OG PS four at home. Yeah, um, and I have some issues with it. You know, every now and then it'll randomly eject the disc. I found out why. I can't fix it. But I, f- I found a fix for it. What it is? You just tape the fucking thing. No, shut. what it is? What I've found because I, I did a fair bit of googling. The eject button. Mm. It's rubber. Yeah, and what happens is when it gets really hot the rubber can expand and so it expands enough to hit the internal board to eject the disc right and so one feature was to pull the rubber foot out from underneath it uh, which i did Um, but there's still a little bit in there that it broke off (laughs) so it's still in there so what i need to do is grab the console and sit it over the like i've got my drawer 
and I sit the front of the console just off the edge of the drawer so yeah. the eject rubber foot isn't touching anything and it stopped the problem as long as I have it sitting out there. Okay. But yeah, so if your PS4 is randomly ejecting discs, it can be because the heat makes the rubber eject button expand and push the button. Just one little fact there. Um, but yeah, that would be a... Well, yeah, to be a... Sev- seven year leap for me Mm -hmm. and that's the big jump for me and I'm like fucking sweet that's cool Mm. having said that if my PS4 dies in the next couple of years do I I'll probably just buy a slim to be honest Mm. because it's cheaper and I'll save myself 200 bucks but but in a couple if you say in a couple of years it'll probably be cheaper probably be like you know 350, 400 bucks anyway so So I want to go through what the community have said about this we'll jump on what they say the short short answer for me it comes 2020 and they announce a new PlayStation I'm probably going to buy it Uh, Mm. like my pro is fantastic. It's doing great for me. Yeah. But like that's four years. Technology will be a different place then. Yeah. And I want to play what cool games come out. So Joel says, what does that make of titles we know are likely to be a couple years out? The Last of Us Part 2 and Death Stranding, for example. Do you think that they will come out on the wagging tail of the PS4 or be held to be given the full power of the PS5 for launch titles? If they do in fact come out on the PS4 as promised, I'll bet money that they also do the re-release on PS5 as the first year of remasters. Yep. That's pretty much exactly what happened with uh, The Last of Us. Yep, and that's, that, that's um, exactly what will happen. So uh, Naughty Dog pretty much released The Last of Us, I'm pretty sure, when the PS4 was out. On, but they released it on PS3. Like I'm positive that they're like the PS3 had come out. The, so the PS4 had already been out, and they still released it on PS3 because like it was like the swan song to the yeah. To yeah. The PS3. So, you know, Nintendo have done it with the last few gens of Zelda. You know, Twilight Princess was on GameCube, but it was mainly for the Wii. Breath of the Wild is mm. on the Switch, but it was but also I, on the Wii U. I don't because I don't think it would be hey, it's brought on PS4 and you know, PS4 and PS5. I think it would be along the lines of. Hey, this is the last great Naughty Dog game you want to mm. get on PS4. And Joel, Joel said to follow up, pretty much every big PS3 title from 2013 has come out again on the PS4. And that's, pretty, not, that's because not everyone bought yeah, PS3. That's pretty much exactly what will happen. I don't think that will happen as much now mm-hmm. with the PS4 having 70 million consoles in the wild. It's yeah. like a lot of the a lot of the reason they did that for PS3 was one they were testing the new uh, the, testing the new. Uh, new hardware mm-hmm. and it was not enough people played these yep like like it's surprising that people didn't play last of us yeah like you yeah i didn't play it on ps3 yeah um i played on ps4 i finished it on ps3 and bought it on ps because you can get it for like 15 bucks now in a sale which is fucking amazing ben says i feel like it's a race on who is the first to get the new tech out and which one is better they should really take their time because we all know pc is years ahead on consoles at the moment that's right i said it pc master race for life Thanks, Ben. Well, yeah, it's pretty much it because as soon as new con, like we saw it with the PS4 and the Xbox One, as soon as they were announced, everyone's like, "What are the specs? What's better specs? What's more powerful?" And that was all the news. Not like, "Hey, we're getting a sweet new console." It's like PS4 is three percent more powerful than the Xbox One. Ha, oh, suck it, Xbox. You fucking suck. <laughs> That's what that was my experience anyway. See, see, but that's because that's what it wants, right? You want the one, you want one of the most powerful because that, in theory, will last you the longest. Mm. And we and the console generation shown exactly that. Yeah. The PS4 Pro, the PS4 has one iteration, the Pro. Mm-hmm. Xbox has two. Why? Because the Xbox One, the original, was hot trash. Yeah. It barely ran games at 1080 ps4 no worries at all mm. so they had to release the one s to be able to match what the ps4 can do and then the x and the xbox one x is the ps4 pro plus yeah. like it can <laughs> genuinely run games at 4k 60 mm. like it can like what i'm finding a lot very interesting actually with a lot of the reviews that are coming out for one x uh, for the one x now we didn't get one obviously so we don't know what the embargo details are but there's very limited comparisons with the pro in these review discussions Mm -hmm. um i'm like because everything you're saying the fucking pro is doing or pro is done but like the xbox one is doing it slightly better but no one is able to address the fact that yeah it's been done over here but it's slightly better well a funny funny uh article or video from digital foundry was that titanfall 2 is running better on the pro than it is on the xbox one x Mm. Uh, but yeah, it really. Oh, and, uh, so I watched Assassin's Creed on Digital Foundry yeah, this yeah, morning, yeah. and they were like, uh, "Yeah, it's noticeably better on the X. Like yeah. it actually runs. Uh, we so it has a dynamic resolution on both. Um, on the PS4, the it'll drops it it drops to the lowest at about. I think I think it maxed it out about eighteen hundred P or something. Mm-hmm. Um, when on the P on the Xbox One X, it'll actually hit up to twenty one sixty, and and. The lowest will drop to be about 1440p on the Pro. Hits about 1800 at its lowest on 1X. So on paper, 
it's a noticeable difference in terms of percentage wise us as players probably barely but it, it's also not just resolution that makes the game look good either yeah um, which did H- HDR digital, is the biggest implement which the best digital foundry go into all the details and such HBR, uh, HDR is fantastic digital foundry are fucking fantastic Dave says I don't mind paying a thousand bucks for a console mm-hmm. did it for the PS2 and PS3 sure did. give me a legit console capable of running AAA games at 4K 60fps and quit hiding comp- compromised texture lighting and shadow effects behind the 4K badge for sure I reckon, you know, 4K and 60 FPS will be the minimum benchmark for next-gen consoles because right now, like, <coughs> that, that's all the rage. Everyone loves it. You know, that's what everyone wants. Well, you know, the majority wants. And, in a, you know, especially if we're looking at 2020, that should be the minimum benchmark for these consoles. I personally, I've said it many, many times, I'm not fussed on it. It doesn't do anything for me. But if I bought a PS5 and it happened to be 4K and 60 FPS, cool, I'll fucking take it, whatever. Uh, and Lee came in with quite a big one. A bit angry, I think, too. No way. Thanks, Lee. I don't see it... Ha- this is uh, for uh, the games that... Uh, this is in response to Joel about the games, you know, crossing mm-hmm. the generational gap. Lee says, I don't see it happening, or if it does release under the PS5 banner, I still expect it to very much be a part of the PS4 ecosystem, similar to yet another pro. <coughs> oh, this is um, for the actual console itself. Uh, there was nothing stopping Sony and Microsoft releasing the Pro and Xbox One X under new names numbers. They're essentially like every other next-gen console, objectively faster. So what changed this time? I think they're realising people don't want to scrap their entire game collection in lieu of new and faster. I think it's going to be very PC-orientated going forward with new iterations of the same infrastructure. See, I like that idea. And he touches on a point that gets me too, is that I don't like giving up entire libraries of games Mm -hmm. because, for whatever reason, the lack of backwards compatibility we've had this gen. You know, Microsoft has done good work uh, working on it slowly. You know, a lot of their games are backwards compatible. Sony just doesn't do it. They, you know, remaster instead of make them backwards compatible. Um, So it is a good point, is that, you know, instead of a... Shit. Instead of it being labelled you know, PS5 and Xbox One X2 or whatever the fuck they're going to call it, you know, just the PlayStation and the Xbox and, you know, new iterations of the same infrastructure so you can play everything you've spent all this money See, on. See, I don't, I, I don't think they can call it the PlayStation because if they were to call it the PlayStation, then it would never change. That's the whole point of the name. Like, this is the definitive version of the PlayStation. Well, um, <clears throat> I think it would be the, you know, PlayStation something. Like, not maybe not five, but something. Does it look like I'm not wearing any shorts in the camera? Uh, it looks, looks like you're a little bit naked, yeah. Uh, so I think he's, I think he has a point in terms of you know they could have made this next generation, but I don't think the leap was enough. As we said, the One X is um, what's the other point? That the One X is arguably enough to be the leap. Yeah. So One X, as you mentioned, One X did, they put themselves in a, in a tough spot by calling it an Xbox One X. Mm. Uh, so as you said, the downside is. They're, they're making Xbox One games that are fancy. What yeah. they should make is have an Xbox... Like what They should make a PlayStation 5. A PlayStation 5. So when people make games, they make games for the PlayStation 5. Mm. But that PlayStation 5 can play PlayStation 4. Yeah. So you don't, you, don't make a, you, don't, you don't make a souped up PS4. You make a PS5 that can play PS4. Mm. And you know... It, it's, That's how it should be done. Yeah. So Xbox are going the completely wrong way of Xbox One improvements... Like you know, you make a new Xbox that can play old Xbox. That's pretty, pretty how pretty much the reason work. I haven't played Red Dead Redemption is I missed it at the time it was current on PS3. Can't play it on PS4 because mm-hmm. I can't read the fucking disc, and I'm not going to pull out my PS3 and plug it in and do all of that to play one game. If I could throw the game into the PS4 and play it, I'd finish it. Yeah, the PS3 controls really fucking hand, hard to use now. Yeah, they're really garbage. So small. They're really light. It's so small. It's so light. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I would just love for the next gen. I'd, I want to be able to play everything I've bought this because I've spent thousands on games this gen. Um, I would need to be able to play it on the same console. Like that's my that's my dream anyway. Yeah, so is it, yeah, it's a make a PS Five. Because then what yeah. what happens to the games like like Rocket League and come out on PS Five? You know the people that uh, you know Diamond plays. You know it'll be tied to their account. But what if the you know do they have to buy Rocket League again? to be able to play on the latest gen of consoles or can they just backwards play Rocket League because it's been optimised for... I don't know. Big complicated thing. Yeah. I want to know what What you do wants. is yeah. you just, you know, you using the power of backwards compatibility, you buy a PS5 and then you just install it. You just go to the works. PS Store and re-download it. Yeah, that's it. And maybe it's got a PS5 patch. 
Yeah, that's it. That's how it fucking works. Yeah. Done. Please, please do that. Because so like you... the the benefit of the it's going on with what Lee said, as in they are becoming more like PCs. Yeah, they are. So as a result, their innards are more easy to work with. Like with the PS3 and its cell processor, for some reason they made that stupidly difficult to, to you know. Mm. But now with a PS4 and a, P, a PS4 and an Xbox, are relatively similar on the insides. Yeah. Right. So that's where like so i you know it makes sense like just fucking make it better and then make it play better so what's the one thing that you would like to see change in the next gen you know how we were playing cod last night mm. <clears throat> it's like let's party up let's fucking do this together yeah. it's like okay go to the social tab go to your name invite you take me out of the game send you the invitation to go back into the you game do it. so you can leave the game to accept the... I know you can push the PS button when it pops yeah, up. Yeah, we're, we're you, so used to not using you the, can leave the, the dash. You leave the game so you can join my party, then it puts you back in the game. Seamlessly put it all in. Yeah. Just join party in the game. I don't have to be a party on the PlayStation. Just make me a party in whatever fucking game I'm playing. Mm. Like That's just a little minor gripe that really fucking bugs me. Is every time I want to party with someone, I'm going to leave, leave the game and you know do it, go through the PlayStation to join a party with someone instead of just partying with a friend in whatever game we happen to be playing. So work that in somehow. I'm easy. Like I'm, mm. I'm happy with what we've got now and I don't really think too far ahead. I prefer features to be pitched to me and me go, I like that instead of me pitching features. Yeah. Well, mine's pretty, mine's dead simple. And the backwards compatibility, of course. Mine is dead simple. As in, we're going to like, we're going to start hitting a point with resolution. We're going to start getting diminishing returns. Mm. As in standard def to high def, holy shit. Uh, HD to ultra HD. <laughs> It's pretty like like yeah. I think no it's it's like oh, okay cool but the benefits of HDR is what's changing mm. so that's HDR is the wow right yeah so if, if it's like because when you've come over here you've just seen my TV and you're like oh it looks really cool but you you need to see what HDR with and without HDR like the differences is well that's the only way I notice differences is when they're side by side yeah if I because if I <clears throat> if I play Assassin's Creed here and then I go home and I play Assassin's Creed, to me, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. Because I'm not seeing them side by side. And that's where I don't see the benefit. Yeah. So I think that we're going to hit a point where the resolution gets to diminishing returns. What This is the one thing that fucking baffles me about the Xbox One X is they're like, hey, it has a fucking stupid high GPU. Like, that's cool. But the bottleneck is the CPU. It's the same eight eight core Jaguar. Granted, it's clocked at a, it's, it's a higher... Uh, higher megahertz gigahertz whatever the fuck it is it runs it runs it runs faster but it's the same cpu like we're gonna hit a point where gpu you know like gpu will increase but we're not it'd be like eight the 8k gaming is not coming anytime soon so then in ps5 we get 4k but with the cpu and um, and ram that it makes it possible to run at 60 frames mm. you know because the 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 resolution isn't entirely what runs at the frame rate that's cpu so that's the computing power mm. so like it goes okay cool well the computing the, the graphics it makes it look super pretty but the actual system itself needs to be able to make it run at 60 frames that's where the benchmark that, that needs to bring up and balance out so it's going to cost more because CPU is fucking expensive, but that would be the advantage. Mm. Like people keep making the gen the graphic graphic leaps are great, but also unnecessary when your computer is not powerful enough yeah. to pump out those graphics. That's, That's all we want to say about it. But what do you guys want out of the next gen? Do you think it's too soon? Do you think it's too far away? Please drop us a comment below, or jump and join in the Facebook community. Have a chat with us about it. Always up for talking the games. <laughs> Who's what game? Well, that was a little, um, yeah. Then to talk about the generations and what games are there, that's way, way down the line. These are what these are the things that are coming to your PlayStation this week in a section we call Coming to the Players. New releases for the week of November 17, 27, 27, I was going to say. 2017. Stop me if you want to talk about something. Ashes Cricket, PS4 Digital. ATV Drift and Tricks, PS4 Digital. Ben 10. PS4 digital and oh, retail. Already out. Yeah, I think so. I don't know what happened with that. Yeah. Cat Quest, PS4 digital. De Blob, hey, PS4 really, really De digital. Demon Gaze 2, PS4, PS Vita, digital and retail. The Elder Scrolls 5, Skyrim VR, PS VR. Digital uh, and retail out on the 17th. Yeah. Uh, we've re I've reached out to Bethesda, so I want to have mm -hmm. some fun with it. Apparently, um, they have added to... I don't know when we talked about it previously with the move controllers, how it was all very teleporty. <clears throat> they have... Uh, altered that in some way so they've sort of got around the the analog sticks by 
<clears throat> when you want to move, you hold the move button in the middle of the controller and you tilt it forward and that'll bring you forward. That's better. Um, and then on the right stick, you use the, cause you know, it's, it's the move button in the, in the four, uh, symbols and then you, you use the use the two on the side to swivel so it won't be as seamless as as a thumbstick but it's a good in the interim take a while to wrap your head around I it'll think. take a little bit but like a, apparently it's as not as motion puking as i'm glad i listened to the feedback from the teleporty and change that good on you but well, so the teleporty is still there if you want to oh, is it? but that's the intimate that's oh. the intermediate and then you can play with the full bone controller if you wanted sure. to uh if we if we so will reach out and if we all goes well we'll be streaming the f out of that game because hell's yeah yeah far from noise i want to see you fight a dragon really. digital so you, you, you know how long it look, takes to get to a dragon I guess i'll play for a little bit more i get the bump forward to get a dragon knights of valor ps4 digital la noir oh yeah ps4 digital lego marvel superheroes 2 ps4 digital and retail outcast second contact ps4 digital and retail road rage ps4 digital oh. and retail i remember that game yeah School Girl slash Zombie Hunter, PS4 Digital and Retail. The Sims 4, oh, yeah. PS4 Digital and Retail. Totally forgot about Sims. Yeah, oh, me I'm, too. I'll have to make an email. Enjoy the power to create and control people in a virtual world where there are no rules. Be powerful and free, have fun and play with life and just fucking murder people. That'll be good for about like two hours, I think I bored. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 PS4 Digital and Retail. I'm so excited and also so apathetic at the same time. I don't... No. Embark on an endless Star Wars action experience from the best-selling franchise. Rush through waves of enemies on Starkiller Base. Line up your X-Wing squadron from an attack on a mammoth First Order Star Destroyer in space. Or rise as a new hero, Iden, an elite Imperial Special Forces officer, and discover an emotional and gripping single-player story spanning 30 years. I was so keen for Battlefront 1, and I got it, and then I was like, hey! Then you're like, come play I'm like, yeah. Yeah, like no one else had no one, like no one else had it. I think that's probably the that yeah maybe. I don't know. Star Wars Battlefront One had a lot of problems. Be interesting to see if they've all been worked out. People wanted the campaign. They got a campaign. People complained the campaign wasn't long enough, but I'm sure the five hour good campaign will be better than a thirty hour shit campaign. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't stumble. Yeah, that. <laughs> that's like a little bit of busting rhymes there. Tokyo Tattoo Girls PS4 Vita what? Digital and Retail. I don't, I don't, I don't like that it. cover at all. Very it's time to show off oh that God. ink. Enter the world of Tokyo Tattoo Girls, where you will select a companion girl and battle the syndicate by conquering the 23 wards of Tokyo. Power up your companion with gorgeous Japanese tattoos and unleash her true power. She looks like she's like 12 on this cover. It yeah, makes me uncomfortable. She's not old enough to get the tattoos. VA-11, HAL-A, in other words, Valhalla, PS Vita Digital. That's a dumb name. Cyberpunk bartender action, booze them up. Dumb. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I want to read this without you seeing it. Cyberpunk bartender action in is a boozum up about waifus, technology, and post dystopia life. It actually says that. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's it for the drop. Anyway, as always, that brings us to the end of this week's episode of For the Players. If you enjoyed this super long episode of For the for no. the call of if you enjoyed that super long conversation, you can join in many more every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time Ooh. on YouTube, iTunes, and other podcast Ooh. services. But how do you join that conversation? Head over to www.thepopculturist.com slash questions. Give us your questions, thoughts, and suggestions for the show. If we between shows is a little bit too long, please join us on Facebook, join us on Discord, and consider joining us on Patreon. Check out the tiers there. There might be something there that interests you. Oh, man, I'm totally having party pies for lunch. Fuck yeah. I'm Ryan Betson. I'm Josh Saunders. And that was for the players. Yes. Oh, party pies. Want some party pies? No. <laughs> <laughs>